Ähm, guten Nachmittag. Ich bleibe beim Deutschen. Ich fand die letzten zwei Talks eigentlich ganz sympathisch. Ähm, wenn alle finden, also sagt einfach, ruft rein, wenn ihr es gerne auf Englisch haben möchtet. Ja? Ich habe, einer beschwert sich. Okay, oh, we can switch English. Who is for English? Okay, so that's it. Fair enough, then I can use the video much easier for, for, uh, for further stuff. Um, application Cloud, the disruptive approach to third generation software delivery. Um, I've, I do not go that much into the technical depth. I really prepared more or less three themes. Um, on one side, why is Swisscom actually doing this? Um, why we believe that platform as a service is important, is very important, and a little bit about how we do it and, and how we would like to ask actually all of, of you to, to help and to participate where we go. Who am I? For the ones uh, who know more the, 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 the faces of the application cloud over the last uh, couple of months, even years, um, I'm, I'm cloud advocate uh, for, the, for the whole cloud team or in the specialized sales team, pre-sales team of, of Swisscom. We are with the um, enterprise customers. And I'm actually, I have an, uh, a background in, in, in programming. I started with the web, with the web in the 90s, um, had several roles, consultant, architect, developer. Um, and I, I would say now I'm one year that, I'm have, that I have the pleasure to be part of the, of the application cloud team. And I heard a lot of nice things today. And if I remember back, or when we go back to the keynote we heard this morning, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm quite on the same page there. Um, let's start with this triad here. Um, everybody of you has its own interpretation uh, what this means. But I really believe that, that the step between client-server to cloud is, a, is as huge as the step was between mainframes to client-server. And we are somewhere in the middle of, of bringing this all, really starting to lifting this off. As there are already, or as there are still mainframes uh, around today, I'm sure it will also take many, many years um, to have all these steps made. I do not really want to repeat everything we heard now in these last talks, so um, everybody should fill in that um, himself. But if we go and look this up for Swisscom, what we see here are more or less the, the business segments of, of Swisscom today. Um, so it's a question, <laughs> I wasn't sure when I joined the company, do I join now a big company, 20,000 people, 12 billion revenue, or is it more a small one? Because if I'm on the market, um, the companies I hear are the big ones, right, that, that we have, to, uh, we are compared to. And if we look at that, we see that Swisscom is still, a, of course, a telco, a telecommunication operator, but you need to know that um, Seventy percent of the products that Swisscom is today having to make the revenue didn't exist 10 years ago. So it's not just a, a telco anymore. On the right side, we also see that, for the, those of you who know that, not, su not surprisingly, that um, Swisscom is a huge system integrator. And um, Together, when we combine that, of course, comes the whole digital solution provider. I mean, it's not just telephone systems anymore. It, it is the whole, like Swisscom TV 2.0 is, is a very nice uh, example. We're very proud of, of the product itself, but there are many, many more. Uh, is it really, let's say, storage things like, like uh, Storebox or, or, or uh, DocSafe? Or is it more very special? Um, solutions, even going into the big data, into the IoT, and so on. There are a lot of, of, of possibilities, and it's not that long ago that this first uh, car uh, without a driver automatically drove from, also drove around Zurich, and uh, there is also technology from us in there, and, and we are really participating there. So we have a lot of possibilities. And if you see these th three big domains, you see immediately the two on the, the two 
uh, light blue ones, the APIs on the side telco to the customer of the telco, and on the other side from an IT or ICT to the digital solution provider, we have immediately their platform as a service. And if we go on here, um, you could say that there's a lot of discussion how many clouds has Swisscom actually, and what is a cloud, and back and forth. But we, could say, we can say today that we have three expressions of our product. We talk about an enterprise cloud, a telco cloud, and an application cloud, which actually um, really uh, one goes in the also goes more or less in these three different domains that we we saw here um, we heard this morning uh, about this nfv cloud indeed the telco cloud is is close to that at the end of the day it's also hard to sell to a bank for example a telco cloud if you try to do that it's much easier if you have really a concept that goes over all the different um, domains, and that's then the enterprise cloud. And as I said um, today, or, or, or what I represent is, is this uh, on the right side, the application cloud. Um, two more about that. This together then brings us in this situation. Why Swisscom? Um, I had the pleasure to, to meet um, Carsten Schlotter once, and um, he, he then he, he, he very nicely explained me uh, the three pillars, how he saw our, our industry, which, of course, uh, he, he said it's built on, on software, hardware, and network. Um, I tend to add um, electricity, power, uh, to that whole thing as well together today. Um, and the nice thing is, indeed, the telcos has have something to say. In, in that whole industry that we are coming in. So it's, uh, we don't have to give everything uh, to the big players, the big internet players, the, telco are, the telcos are coming back and are, want to be part of the, whole, of the whole game. And that's why we talk internally about this 360 degree cloud. This is uh, an older concept, in the meantime, strategic concept, where we really want to say it's about internal and external cases. It's really about doing it for ourselves. We are a great or, or a big solution provider, and um, we want to start sharing uh, that with our community, with our customer base. And this is, at the moment, um, Switzerland um, focused. What does this mean? Uh, no, the internet doesn't stop at the, at the Swiss border, but it's clear that for, for us to really do the job in a way that how the customer also is expecting that from a, cost, from, a, from a company like Swisscom. It's important that we know where we start. And I have found the last couple of months, um, it's really interesting to see. I have technical stuff as well later, no problem. <laughs> Um, I find it very interesting to see that, that the customers really enjoy this locality. And I'm quite sure that um, the, 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 we all, as, as, as Switzerland, we have something to say in the, in the cloud theme. And we will be capable of doing that in, in, the, in, in a whole ecosystem and, and really uh, bringing each other, innovating together and bringing each other further in, in all these levels. And therefore, to go um, uh, a little bit deeper into the cloud or, or into the platform, my platform as a service. And maybe to, to first fight the myth, um, it's uh, the last two years, um, cloud was always, or I heard it so many times, it's always about money. Um, this here is from a Gartner survey of 2014 of the CIOs. Um, around uh, 30, 33% here were on the obvious things to, to, to run a business, but only 14% are about cost. So the big question is, what, what was the, the last answer? And it's really agility. Um, Gartner even created a new word. We have here business moments, they call it. So it's clear that, that the whole, wh whatever we do here on this, on this cloud level, it's really to start enabling us to, to bring software to the customer, to to have our products up there. And from another point of view, if you look at, at, at how the whole thing developed, um, we see that 
So what we have on the three layers is on the, underneath, let's say, system infrastructure in the middle, somewhere the applications or the middleware, and on top are applications, and from left to right, from hosting, housing, to, to software as a service. Um, this morning in the keynote, there was uh, this thing mentioned between PaaS and SaaS. I call it PaaS Plus at the moment, or PaaS with the uh, application frameworks. You see that in the, the, the fourth column, um, and it's exactly that. It's, it's how can we bring all the different solutions together to bring a platform together that, that we can start accelerating. And if you think about hosting on the left side, I mean, what we have, if we go more to the left side, we are just more unique. We are just more... Um, uh, we can control, we have more control over what we do. But it, it's, of course, uh, much more complex to, to do that. And that's why if we start to be more on the right side, we just get much, much more productive. And for me, this is good enough. So I, I saw so many explanations what cloud is, what cloud is not, what, 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 what private to public and so on. Um, I want to be productive. I mean, at, at my heart, I'm a developer. I want to bring solution out there to my customers, and, and I need the toolings to do that. And the one who can give me that will, will be my buddy, will be my friend to where I do the buy-in. And so, um, of course, everything uh, here, th the big thing, this is continuous delivery, the agility, the DevOps things. Um, we use this slide quite a long time already, but I changed something. Um, you see there on the realized goal level, of course, the, the, the message here is you have five minutes for infrastructure set up, 10 minutes scalability in minutes. But you always had this one month on the knees of the realized goal life. And I, from the beginning, I had a problem with these slides and saying, it, it doesn't necessarily make us developers faster to use the cloud. We still have to do the job. But if we are really capable of starting the, th the whole life cycle, the whole product life cycle, and when we get the tools, we really start to be capable of accelerate. And that's why, for me, continuous delivery, DevOps, agility, it really starts on HL business. It's, it's getting our human-centered design colleagues uh, with us on our side. It's, it changes our architecture. Yes, microservices, uh, even anti-fragile systems, all these new buff things, even the teams, the, the multifunctional teams, the scrum teams, the feedback-based thing, and even by knowing that not everything is just a, a feedback, it's not everything is a business system where I have to change. Some, some systems are complex to build. So yes, we need this, this, um, the classic way to do it as well. But for business systems, I believe really there is a lot of, of, of um, chance, possibility, and power into the continuous delivery thing. And so, whatever I do, I always come again, we, we come down to these uh, three elements, or three drivers of our platform as a service infrastructure. It's a tool, it's a, it's a platform, it's a service platform for developers, or the developer is in focus, because he is providing the software for the customer. Um, does this mean we don't need any sysadmins anymore? Of course not. They are absolutely important still. Uh, even the blend, is, it, it starts to blend, right? That developers and, and operators um, have to work much more closer together. Um, on a technical base, um, this horizontal scaling, the containerization, there are many technologies we can, we can mention, but if we can really start leveraging containers with the complexity of the networks that really start to accelerate, then we start to be where we all want to go, right? And there is still, there is still work in that. As it's, it's, it's not just ready uh, to take out of the, uh, of the drawer and just using that. And at the end of the day, is this time to market the, the thing that then will give the business this agility that we wanted to have. So, to go a little bit deeper now and going closer to the, the, the technical things, um, this is our architecture picture that we use more in customer communication when we talk about the Swisscom Enterprise Cloud. 
I don't plan to go too much into the detail here. The important thing is that what you see is there are many stacks. And that's exactly what our enterprise customers face. They have many stacks, internal, external, Amazons, uh, Swisscom. Um, and from an enterprise point of view, what we need is an orchestration layer, the integration of the whole thing. It's difficult to say if we can buy in two, three, four, five years, that's just off the shelf, but what we need to achieve here is how to integrate into the customer's IT, how to start offering and leveraging service catalogs, um, third party, internal, external. Ben, so you see, the machine that we build as Swisscom is quite big. It's, uh, it's not easy, and it takes years, and the whole journey is now on its way for three years, I would say. And that's why I would like to go back now to, to our application cloud or to the platform as a service uh, infrastructure, which is much easier, it's just a conceptual image here um, that you see we, we build on, on OpenStack, and we have a lot of Docker in there as well, and as many of you may know, we also have a Cloud Foundry up there. Um, Cloud Foundry will have a, a talk later as well. Nicola will, will show us uh, um, news from directly from the Valley about where the foundation is going and, and, and what's happening. I have a small overview slide as well. But um, what you can see here is actually um, building the application cloud based on OpenStack and, and, and Cloud Foundry is, is again, it's not just something you take, uh, you just put together and, and everything runs. Uh, it's quite a huge team and it takes quite some time to bring this whole infrastructure into a shape um, like we wanted, that we are capable of offering that. And even then, is it just part of the overall umbrella of the cloud infrastructure that, that Swisscom is, is providing and, and wants to provide to the market. So it, it really, um, you see also the, the images plum grid scale IO up here, you see some, uh, all these new buzzwords, you can divide pass in the meantime in many, many, I guess you can over time add every small letter of the alphabet in front of a pass. So what is a platform and, and where do we go? Um, but it's also about, it's, it's really about leveraging all these services, about leveraging also even, even business services that we can bring on top. Is it the billing? Is it, is it identity that we can bring in and entity services? Um, or even our, our, our very own customer care center that comes in here. And to, to do that, to leverage that, we need many more partners. And uh, this slide is, is also, as it's, it's, uh, we had a partner summit um, last week where, where all our partners were invited to, to Zurich and we had two days. We were really working together and you can see here that it takes many pieces to bring all this together. Some are vendors, some are open source software pieces, some are um, uh, also uh, startups. And um, what I'm really proud of, or, or I mean, I don't have any obligations to deliver anything. I'm just underway in Switzerland, capable of talking, or I'm, I'm allowed to talk about all these things. Um, I'm, I'm every time when I learn a little bit more where the team is going, what for decisions are taken, I'm, I'm really proud to get there. One of the newer things, for example, you see here Docker on the infrastructure as a service layer. Um, we will provide services, or the database services, for example, um, are planned to provide it in Docker images. So everybody who knows the technology a little bit to say, wait the minute, stateful content like data, the stateful load like databases in a Docker container, Hmm, not necessarily easy. How do we manage that? And indeed, together um, with Cluster HQ, with Flocker, we found uh, capabilities of, of monitoring and, and handling, orchestrating our Docker containers with Scale.io and, and, and EMC in the end. We found solution how to hang the, the um, 
volumes under every container to be sure that these that, that we know which which Docker container, which volumes are mounted underneath, and if a VM goes down, how to bring everything again into into the place as it as it has to be. As these are the innovations, of course, that 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 then happens by by being capable of using great local engineers, but also having this, this whole knowledge of, of startups and open source software in the world, and bring that together into, into a business story. And therefore, I mean, you know, we are still not live, so it doesn't make much sense if I go into details of which services we all plan to go and where will we come and so on. But something that differentiates um, Swisscom uh, clearly from other providers is, uh, as I said, Swissness, we target the, the Swiss market first. It is the security aspect or this, this, this expectation of um, security elements that, that, that the market um, expects from us to, to solve. And um, what you see in the center is, in a, is a framework, how our security um, department f tries to figure out what the threats are and how do we react. And uh, we, I don't know if this is a success story, but Swisscom definitely belongs to one of the company who is attacked all the time. As it is, it is uh, definitely not something that is new for our security team. And when we, or if we try to deliver or want to deliver a cloud, it has to be a secure cloud. Which means we need to do that from the bottom up or from top down, um, and it's it's very um, I love it to see then situations. I guess in, in April uh, there was a, on a security talk there was Intel on the stage together with Swisscom presenting their uh, solutions. How do you do how to do secure other um, better say trusted computing. Um, it, it goes into details of having um, identifiers on the chip so that we can define workload A is only allowed to run on this hardware or on that hardware. But you have to then bring that up, of course, through the whole stack. So it started with the networks on, 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 the, on the hypervisor or on the kernel structure where we have with uh, PlumGrid, um, even on kernel level. Uh, the possibility to go it into firewalls. Uh, so we can really start, it's, it's much lower than only the VM. It, it really goes into the kernel, it goes into the load, it goes into the level where is the workload really executed to be capable of saying this load is allowed to go there and this load is not allowed to go there. I don't say we have everything in place already. That would be, a, I mean, the world is figuring out uh, where we go there. But it's really, um, uh, promising and, and awesome to work for a company who, who is on its way itself and is part of this journey and, and really goes there. So you see things like self-encrypting um, devices uh, are just the start of, of course. And if you then ask, think about all the IoT, all the robotics, as we heard this morning right in the keynote, these this, this robot clouds that are coming, it's very important that we figure that stuff out before the whole world starts to be interactive and we have no control anymore about what's happening. Therefore, um, I'm almost ready to wrap up. I'm sorry, uh, we tried to organize a workshop as well, didn't pay it out. Um, I'm happy to make you, uh, to, to give you demos or, or, or talk closer to what we're doing with um, Cloud Foundry. Uh, just to mention again, uh, that there is the Cloud Foundry Foundation, and to, to underpin what I said is that, as you see in the, by the, with the gold members on the right side, is Swisscom there as well. Uh, what many people don't know, um, Swisscom was elected to have uh, a seat in the Platinum Board, as in the, in the board of Cloud Foundry, which uh, Nicola will explain much better this afternoon, what it means, what we do, what we can go. Um, but it's, it's just very nice to see that, that we are so close to f one of these platforms. Um, of course, I mean, discussions which paths and, and where to go, for me, who is very customer focused, uh, I don't care that much which pieces are today in there, which pieces are tomorrow in there, but we are in a perfect place to leveraging the, the, the new 
um, containerized, microservice-based infrastructure that we can start doing with Cloud Foundry. Which brings me actually to my more or less most important slide, which, is go about, which goes about the ecosystem of the whole thing. Um, we will only be strong to get, when we can do that together. Uh, we had on the, in the last talk, we saw also the ISV, the references to the ISVs, to the independent software vendors. Um, we know exactly that it cannot be, to, it's not about selling the Swisscom cloud, having, having so and so much load on it or not. We need to build the right toolbox to really leverage. And uh, when I talk to integrators, consultants, ISVs and startups in Switzerland, I, I get there this feedback uh, that this is very welcome, um, that we find ways how to grow together. So there are many ways. You, you don't just have to become the next customer of the application cloud. It can even grow much, much faster, integrating marketplaces, how to come together, even on this level uh, that I showed you with the enterprise cloud, how, how uh, whole service catalogs um, come together. And that's why it is uh, a pleasure for me to be here at uh, the... Open Cloud Day, because open source from a vendor, but in this integration, or in this telco world, and leveraging these, these solutions, um, it's really something that we want to be part of, and I'm sure over the next years it will be great to, to help there innovate with the whole company. If you like to start, we have still, we're still on our closed beta. At the moment, if everything goes fine, we will, in 2015, experience all together the go-live or the, the, the start of the application cloud uh, in a public environment where we all, as, as um, companies, but also um, one, one um, as persons, can start using the app cloud and paying with a credit card. This should, this should be marketed in 2015. Then the sky is the limit.